It was weeks after your arrival into the world that never was, when Axel decided that perhaps enough was enough. Though he was enjoying getting to know you, learning how to draw out the frail light inside your heart, even he could recognise cabin fever. Ever since arriving here, you had been confined to Axel's room. It wasn't very big, and although at first you had enjoyed relaxing without worry of Heartless chasing you, Axel only had limited books to read or things to do, and the novelty was wearing off. Axel, you whined when he came through the door, returning from another mission. Currently, you were upside down on his bed, your feet resting high up on the wall. Seeing your position, he smirked, resting one hand on his hip. Funny, he gloated, watching as you flipped onto your stomach to look at him properly. I seem to remember a conversation where you said you didn't feel safe around me. That's still the case? Yes, that's still the case, you said with an indignant pout, though you had to admit it felt forced. If anything, Axel had acted nothing but a gentleman to you these past few weeks. He slept on the floor so you could have the bed. He listened to you when you felt low, and sometimes he even brought ice creams back after a mission. What you had learned about Axel so far was that he belonged to some organization. However many there were, he was number eight. Confined to his room, you had not met the other members, but Axel said it was for your own good. Apparently, you were different. So different, in fact, that if the other members ever found you, they would never let you leave. Or so Axel said, a lot, every time you asked to leave his room. The thing was, though he would never tell you, Axel had a soft spot for you. His initial spark of curiosity had grown into something he couldn't quite name, but when he looked at you, in those rare moments where you truly let your guard down, he felt whole again. He felt human. He was a nobody, and had no heart, no emotions. Yet, somehow, he felt the tiniest flicker in his chest when the cracks in your armour showed. The nagging feeling that your armour would never truly break away if you stayed here gnawed at him. He felt bored whenever he had to stick around the castle for a few days, let alone in one room and for multiple weeks. He decided, then, that enough was enough. Let's get you out of here. Wait. What? You sounded surprised. Axel smirked. You weren't all that good at hiding your excitement. Hang on, you're not putting me back where you found me, are you? The thought of your heartless free holiday ending so abruptly made you quiver. Axel had already made arrangements, but he liked watching your emotions, the way you didn't hold back for the sake of politeness. You'll see. That was not enough of an answer for you. You whined, but got up off the bed nevertheless. Axel held open his bedroom door for you, but as you passed by him, he pressed his finger to his lips to keep you quiet. You weren't sure you believed his spiel about the other organisation members being dangerous and willing to commit a kidnapping, but then again, Axel had technically kidnapped you. The only reason you could claim it wasn't kidnap was because you were a willing participant. If they truly intended to kidnap you if they found you, you decided it was best to follow Axel's instructions to be as quiet as possible. He took you through the labyrinth of metal corridors at a brisk pace, his hand wrapped around your wrist to help you keep up. You might have protested at the way he suddenly latched onto you without warning, but now that you were on the move, if he were to let go of you for even a moment, you were sure 
you would get lost. You were amazed Axel could tell the corridors apart. He stopped abruptly, midway along a hall, checking back and forth over his shoulder. This'll do, he said, letting go of your wrist. It will, you wondered aloud. This corridor looked just like the last, and probably just like the next. Axel nodded, grinning at you. There's no one in this part of the castle. It's nobody free. Present company excluded, of course. He looked like he was telling a joke. You weren't really sure what he meant. Nobody? What's a nobody? You asked, hoping to join in on his amusement. Instead of explaining, Axel seemed to catch himself, like he realised he had said something he shouldn't have. Hmm? Never mind. Long story. The fact he didn't want to tell you made you want to know more. In the few weeks of being unofficial roommates, he had answered every one of your questions so far. That's how you knew where you were. Although, when Axel had first said the world that never was, you thought he had been telling you a riddle instead of responding. You also knew more about the Dusks and the Heartless now, as well as other creatures like Berserkers and Snipers. The moment he told you that Dusks were the weakest monster, your heart almost stopped. But then, after arming you with all that information, why would he bottle up about nobodies? Come on, you asked in a drawn out, pleading sort of way. What's a nobody? Why is it a long story? Telling you why it's a long story is just as long a story, and really we don't have time, so some other time, yeah? You sensed he was starting to rush. Is someone coming? You weren't exactly worried, but Axel was a very laid-back sort of guy. If he seemed urgent, you had to believe it was urgent. Axel summoned a corridor of darkness. He had taught you about those too. Seeing the gateway appear from nothing, your stomach gave a happy, giddy sort of twist. Where are we going? You asked excitedly. Axel smirked. You catch on fast. He extended his hand out to you, the gate glowing and humming behind him. Shall we? Axel liked to be a little touchy-feely with you. Not in the gropey, creepy way. You couldn't stress enough that he was very gentlemanly in that sense. But he often brushed your hand or squeezed your side to comfort you, to remind you that you were safe when nothing could harm you. At first, you thought he had been referring to the Dusks, but after a week of your stay, he had asked you about your past again. When he asked, he had rubbed his thumb over your knuckles, giving you that same reassuring, it'll be okay expression. You didn't open up to him. In fact, you scolded him for bringing it up when he had said he wouldn't. But he had laughed and accepted your wrath, quickly diverting the subject to something totally off-topic. In all honesty, you had grown to like Axel's gentle touches. They were little, and not all that often, but they made you realise just how long you had gone without real human connection. He was not intrusive enough to be suffocating. Though you refused to tell him about your past, you felt he had an inkling of an idea. He was more than happy to be patient, to ease you back into the world of bonding and forming connections. You had noticed the way your heart felt just a bit swollen, like the light was getting just a bit too big for its thick, dark container. You held Axel's hand. Feeling your fingers lacing with his, he gave them a squeeze, then urged you into the corridor of darkness. You were almost too giddy to see what awaited you. Axel had told you about many of the worlds he had visited on missions. Worlds that made your hometown sound pale and dull in comparison. Stepping out of the corridor, 
Axel had to yank you forward so he could close it behind you. Seeing the world, you had stopped dead. Where are we? You asked in amazed wonder. After successfully sealing off the corridor, Axel turned his full attention on you. He caught the glint in your eye. For a fraction of a second, he felt the darkness leave your heart entirely. It was possible then. He knew it. In that second, he took in every detail of you, from the wistful, gentle look in your eyes, to the way the tendrils of your hair lifted in the breeze and the way your lips were ever so slightly parted as you struggled to take in the scenery. He playfully bumped his side to yours to knock you from your days. Guess the stunned silence means you approve. Of course you approved. He definitely knew that. You could hear the smugness in his voice. You were standing amongst a cluster of trees at the base of a mountain surrounded by a foot of pure white snow. The cold in the air had a bite to it, but you could bear it for the sake of the view. Behind you, the mountains stretched up for miles, white peaks set against the pure blue sky. Ahead of you was a vast frozen lake, so vast, in fact, that perhaps it was the sea. Then there in the distance was a large town, nestled against the frozen water's edge. This is the Kingdom of Arendelle, known for its particularly striking winter festivals, Axel announced, trudging through the snow a few paces as his boots crunched against the soft terrain. Wanna take a look? He raised a red eyebrow. He was acting as though the two of you had wandered from his house to his back garden. Could he not see what you were seeing? Did the sheer difference between the repetitive metal walls of his home and Arendelle not register for him? How can you be so relaxed? You demanded, hardly able to believe you had been stuck in a bland box of a bedroom 15 minutes ago. Incredibly, Axel shrugged. It's not my first time. You had to be in awe of him a little. Just a little. For him to be so blasé, he must have seen endless wonders on his travels. You were jealous. You had spent most of your life running in circles, escaping heartless. You wondered what he must have accomplished in the same amount of time. Axel liked watching your expressions. They were so genuine once your guard was down. It made that same tingle in his chest stir. Giving you no more time to gaze and get frostbite, Axel headed away from the mountains, towards the gate of Arendelle Castle. You were quick to follow. It was one thing to be alone in your hometown, or even in Axel's room, but you didn't fancy your chances against the Heartless in somewhere new and so very vast. As you approached the castle, the clamour of busy people greeted your ears. You wondered about the noise, until you got a glance at the castle courtyard. Oh! You gasped in excitement, dashing ahead when you saw the crowds of merry, brightly clothed people and the buzz of a festival. Is this why we're here? You looked back at Axel, who was ambling along at a leisurely pace, with his hands behind his head. Well, beats being stuck in my room, right? Go on, he said, shooing you away with a lazy hand. Go explore. I'll catch up. If he wasn't coming with you, you were sure that meant he had business of his own. So you weren't here for the festival. You were ready to wager he had something to do for his organisation. Still, it was nice to be out in the fresh biting air, and it wasn't like he was forcing you to go on his errand. You weren't sure how long he planned to stay in Arendelle, so you wanted to make the most of it before you were stuffed back in his room. You waved goodbye to Axel. It was actually strange to leave him. You had been together for almost a month with no other human interaction. You felt like a chick leaving the nest for the first time. 
the worry of Heartless appearing crossed your mind, but knowing Axel was still in the area put you at ease. He gave you the courage to stray, believing he was there to help if you needed it. The winter festival was beautiful. You had something similar back home, pop-up stalls and the like around the holidays, but nothing quite like this. The castle courtyard was full of shops and cafes, an ice rink and ornate detailed frozen sculptures. The most important feature though was the constant, gentle fall of snow. It fell from seemingly nowhere and never touched the ground. It was all the beauty of a flurry with none of the toe-numbing cold of having to walk through it. You never wanted to go home. You didn't want to go back to Axel's cramped bedroom either. You made up your mind then and there. You wanted to travel. If this one world could be so different, you wanted to see them all. It was a long while later when Axel returned to you. You had spent a fair portion of time trying the free food samples, a short while watching an ice sculpting contest, a few minutes running away from an overly friendly walking talking snowman, and were trying to figure out how to transport a tiny ice swan away from Arendelle without it melting when Axel showed up. There was a sign above the stall that read, Warning, sculptures will melt outside the kingdom. Surely that had to be magic then. It made you wonder about the kind of person who could sustain powerful ice magic for an entire kingdom. Look, you said, pointing to the tiny sculpture. Isn't it sweet? Axel smiled, but wasn't looking at the swan. Your light was shining brightly again. Cute, he said absent-mindedly. You passed him a glance, hearing his less than enthusiastic response. Maybe if you actually looked at it? The indignation in your voice caused him to pay attention. He raised his hands in defense. Hey, that thing will melt if I get anywhere near it. But it's charmed to- Trust me. He chuckled, noticing the beginnings of a pout on your lips. For the next hour, Axel followed you around the festival. At first, he kept his distance to give you space, but you kept calling him over to show him something, or to talk to him. Actually, it felt nice that you kept wanting his attention. He had worried at first that you would stay closed off to him, from what you had told him about preferring to be alone. The more time he spent with you, though, the more he realised that wasn't the case. You didn't want to be alone. You wanted to be safe. Protecting the light, the sweet gentleness in your heart was proof of that. He wanted to witness that light. He wanted to see it grow and flourish. The stronger your heart shined, the more human he felt. He felt it more and more that something in his chest was starting to grow. Once you had seen all there was to see at the festival, Axel said he had something else to show you. Steering you through the crowds, he managed to get you back to the castle gates, then took you outside. Away from the castle, and away from the surrounding built-up areas, the landscape was very still. The sounds of the festival could not drift all the way out here. It's up there, Axel said pointing way up into the distance. Up for the walk? Absolutely, you said without looking. Years of outrunning Heartless had kept you in shape. No mountain was too high. Or so you had thought. In all your confidence, you had failed to take into account the snow and ice, along with your less than suitable footwear. Your teeth chattered as you marched on, staying just behind Axel as he led the way. The climb was steep, and the air was bitter, more so as you climbed higher. You started to lag, so Axel took you by the hand, pulling you along. He helped you navigate the rock faces, 
Amused by your determination and the way you ignored the red, stinging flush of your cold face. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, the climb levelled off. At the same time, the frosty breeze disappeared. Almost there, Axel reassured you, squeezing your hand. You did not respond, so he glanced over his shoulder. Catching his semi-concerned, semi-amused expression, you squeezed back to let him know the trek had not killed you off just yet, even though you could barely feel your cold fingers to do so. In all honesty, you didn't care where Axel was taking you. The walk was long, but the stretch it gave your legs was soothing. You were pretty sure Axel understood how bad it was for you, being cooped up in his room all the time. You got the oddest impression he was trying to make up for it, since the whole situation was really his fault. As you carried on through the snow, Axel suddenly told you to close your eyes. What? You asked in disbelief, taking a quick glance around at the uneven, snow-covered ground. Do you trust me? He seemed relaxed on the matter, yet the question still seemed a little loaded. It felt like a leap of faith. Wordlessly, you shut your eyes, holding Axel's hand tighter so he couldn't run off and abandon you in the cold. With your eyes closed, you did not see Axel gaze at you for a moment, pleasantly amazed by your answer. You did not see him raise his hand to your face, only to stop himself dead before he could touch you. If you did truly trust him, he didn't want to accidentally besmirch that by giving in to his innocent but could totally be taken inappropriately with your eyes closed urges by stroking your cheek, your hair, your soft lower lip. Crap. Maybe some of his urges weren't that innocent. He pulled you along, mindful that you were blind to the surroundings. The ground wasn't such a problem. The snow was thick enough to hide the uneven dips and tree roots, but the last stretch of the journey cut through a narrow passage of rocks. He held protruding branches aside so they did not tickle you, and when he could not move the obstructions, he warned you what they were, so you did not have to panic when you felt them. Honestly, the path was such a winding, wobbly route, he hoped the endgame was enough to justify you having to close your eyes. He didn't know how you felt about surprises, but you hadn't complained so far. You might have yelped once or twice, but that was from a twig brushing your cheek and from the sound of a large bird taking off close by. Escaping the crevice, it only took a couple moments more before Axel arrived at his destination. It was a hidden gem, if he said so himself. He took you to stand in front of a lake frozen solid from the cold. Spectacularly, the waterfall that supplied the water had also turned to ice, the spray at its base transformed into thousands of tiny, delicate crystals. Even the droplets on the trees had frozen, refracting the sun so they looked like fairy lights. Bringing you to stand at the very edge of the lake, he let go of your hand at last. You thought the fact you hadn't opened your eyes once the entire journey was nothing short of a miracle. You were dying to know what all the fuss was about. Under any normal circumstances, you definitely would have peaked, but something had stopped you this time. Trust him, you thought. His words hung in your ears. What amazed you most was that you did trust him even when you thought such a thing was impossible for you now. Take a look. Axel watched you open your eyes. He saw the way your expression changed from confusion as your eyes readjusted, to curiosity, to mesmerization. He bit back the question, to ask if you were impressed. He knew you were, and didn't want to spoil the moment with his blatant smugness. What shocked him out of that smugness was the moment you took a step forwards, onto the ice. Uh, 
Is that a good idea?